Hey YouTube, I'm so old I remember when all of this was fields. I didn't really want to make this video because others have done it on YouTube, but a video of mine, why not to be a Jehovah's Witness, has caused a storm. Unfortunately, most of the response has been of the witless variety, and in one case, racist. I was advised to return to my African mud hut and remain silent. I really hope other Jehovah's Witnesses will join with me in finding this sort of behaviour unacceptable. I'm going to explain why the Jehovah's Witness organisation is a cult, and in the interests of brevity, I'm going to depend on Stephen Hassan's work. Hassan is an academic cult exit counsellor that has several published papers to his credit, centred around mind control, brainwashing and coercive persuasion techniques. He developed the BITE model to help people recognise a cult environment. BITE is an acronym, acronym and first up is behaviour control. The Jehovah's Witness organisation is a hierarchical authority structure where obedience is expected and a sheep-like attitude persistently lauded. The member cannot follow normal cultural events such as Christmas, by the way have a great one, birthdays, television, computer games, movies, internet and all media are subject to rules from the hierarchy. The cult membership even reach into the bedrooms of the legally married to condemn unclean practices between consenting married adults. The group controls behaviour but by demanding that members give up their democratic voice and tries where it can to interfere with academic and career options, advising its members to always remember Jehovah and his work. Naturally, members are encouraged to only socialise inside the group. Cults have the characteristics of demanding large time commitments and the Jehovah's Witness organisation complies with this by making it mandatory for its members to spend as much time as possible door knocking at conventions and meetings, preparing for meetings, conducting meetings and presentations. It enforces these time-consuming activities with a reporting procedure in which the hierarchy can easily monitor commitment to the cult. All this work enforces social dependency on the group and isolates them from the real world. Then there's information control. This cult uses its control over behaviour to restrict the information sources of its members. The sheep are told that media is controlled by Satan and not to be trusted. Only official sources allow, are allowed for research and any, to, any negative information is to be met with denial, with accusations of persecution and generally to withdraw from the opportunity to learn. A fantastic example of information control is that publishers distribute Jehovah's Witness material yet are not allowed to accept any material in return from the householder. Restricting information in this way allows the cult leadership to revise their history. I was there in 1975. I saw it all. But younger Jehovah's Witnesses know nothing about all the false prophecies. They restrict contact with ex-members and apostates to, so as to limit the member's opportunity to learn critical information and the information they do provide is repeated and repeated and repeated until it has hypnotic effect. This happens whilst discouraging the members from reading the Bible directly from themselves even though the Bible says be like the Bereans. Thought control the cult then uses its information control to control thinking. Limiting information limits thoughts, and then the cult doubles down by using thought-stopping expressions. Things like mentally diseased stops the member from thinking about anyone else's position with clarity. No one else can be correct because they're sick in the head. Further expressions like truth stop the member from further seeking. When you think you have the truth 
already. How can anyone show you anything? Thought control is also expressed in such terms as irregular, spiritually weak, etc. This forces members to think of his fellow member in terms of their usefulness and value to the organisation only, and not as a person. Not, not a person with family, work and real life issues to deal with. Worldly serves to keep the member uncomfortable in the real world and ensure that relationships with people are tainted and never quite natural. The cult has dozens of expressions designed to keep members' relationships with each other and those outside the cult in compliance with leadership requirements. I ask you, what the hell is spiritual food? Thought control and other factors lead directly to the Jehovah's Witness trump card emotion control and frankly the emotion they need most is fear with loads of guilt too to make you want to do more and more for the cult the cult needs to take control of behavior information and thoughts so its members do not realize there is a true and real alternative way of life ultimately this cult claims to dispense existence which is really a flashy way of saying Obeying the hierarchy is the only way to survive the wrath of their invented tribal god. The cult teaches that Jesus returned invisibly in 1914 and chose the Jehovah's Witnesses as the only people on earth that were worshipping him correctly. Everyone else, all seven billion of us, will be killed. This is despite early Jehovah's Witnesses celebrating Christmas and birthdays and generally being almost normal back then. But this frankly ridiculous story would be laughed off immediately if they didn't have the members' environment on lockdown. Have you noticed though, this is the same line Joseph Smith used to start Mormonism. But because the typical member is mind-controlled, it's hard to get them to think critically, which is a respected and necessary skill in the real world. Also, whenever the sheep show signs of wearying or disbelief, the cult uses fear of demons or introduces another fear to the sheep under the cover of a loving message. An example of this is the advice to safeguard your heart. It sounds lovely, but the underlying message is, if you don't, you'll perish at Armageddon. It's fear disguised, and all the time the members are so controlled that they cannot see they have the, the, the freedom to recognise it for the bollocks it really is. Going beyond the works-based route to salvation and the initial love bombing, they, like other cults, talk about not passing the collection plate. But time is money, and there is always the plea for donations and more and more imaginative ways for the members to pay for God's worldwide preaching work. If they really were God's organisation, why would they parasitically make milk of their members? Can't God provide? There are other reasons why the Jehovah's Witness organisation is a cult. The members pretend to themselves that cults are hidden and clandestine and follow one individual leader. But the Jehovah's Witness leadership is clandestine. It doesn't release accounts or show accountability to anyone, not even the children abused on their watch. They make prophecies, then blame, blame Jehovah with the expression new light. They blame the sheep for not understanding what the leaders have clearly told them. Instead of one leader, they have a board of directors, or a polit politburo. But like any cult, they claim an authority that is impossible to check, then threaten your life for doubting. Anyway, how can a bunch of guys that call themselves a spiritual mother, God's mouthpiece, faithful and discreet slave, appointed over God's belongings, and that interject themselves between you and Jehovah, not be a cult? Salvation is only achieved by making them happy. If you want to refute me, please engage your brain. Race baiting isn't cool. I really didn't think I'd ever be racially abused by a serving witness of Jehovah God.